or were you unpopular in high school? On The Tyra Show, we've always strived to do very probing social experiments. And today, for the first time, we're going to do one on high school popularity. How do popular and unpopular kids really feel about each other? And how would the popular kids feel if they had a chance to trade places with the unpopular kids? and experience life in their shoes. We have an audience full of teens from all across America. Can I hear you, teen? Yeah. And we've got students from a local high school here in New York who participated in our experiment. First, we're going to check out what the self-proclaimed unpopular kids had to say. My name is Brittany. Not the girl with the acne. They call me fat and ugly looking and stuff. I feel like dirt sometimes. I go home and I feel like dirt. I hear girls talking about me or my friends and calling us ugly. And I don't understand how somebody can do that. All of these girls are in awe of one group of seniors. We have these girls in our school called the Plastics. Basically, the Plastics are our fake girls who just so rude for no reason. It is like the movie Mean Girls. They'll walk around like, oh, you know what? You're dirt. They're just nasty. <laughs> they make fun of me because, like, I don't talk clearly and because um, I have acne. Well, one time I was in going to lunch, and there was a girl in front of me, one of the popular Plastics, <laughs> if you should say that. And the girl said, well, I have this fat in front of me, and it just got me really sad. I was wearing a skirt, and I was going to gym, and I just hear someone call out, that's one ugly <laughs> And I started crying. She was like, oh, look at that fat girl. Look at her, she's so big. She broke the chair. I cried, because it's like, I'm struggling myself. I really don't need you to put any more pain into my wounds. People will, like, make fun of me because they live in a trailer park. You're white trash. It brings in, like, a lot of sadness. Like, being judged is like the worst thing in the world to have to deal with. She can't change the fact that she lives in a trailer park. I can't just suddenly wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm pretty. Because like, it really bothers me. How are you different? We're all the same. We all go through the same things. So we all shouldn't be treated differently at all. I'm loving this show because it really puts a face and an emotion onto these girls who they say are not popular. Now we're gonna hear what the popular girls had to say. I'm a popular girl and basically what that means is I dress nice. I like to have fun. I have a lot of friends. I think I'm pretty, so that adds to it too. <laughs> I know I'm pretty. <laughs> I got an entire package going on. On a scale from one to 10, I will give my friends an 11. <laughs> Everyone knows us. Everybody yeah, knows everyone us. Everyone knows, everyone knows, knows us. us. Even in the middle school. We are basically like trendsetters. If we wear something other people are following, we know about it first, and everybody comes to us for approval. Like, are you guys doing that? Okay, so I'm gonna do it too. I think if you're pretty, you're more approachable. People want to come up to you and want to talk to you. They want to get to know you because you're cute. They want to get away with more things because you're cute. Like, yeah, well, guys, like you can, you can manipulate people. Like, well, I want that. Can you give me that for the lunch? Why? And they're like, okay, yeah. Definitely have a lot of fierceness about us. Yeah, <laughs> We're fierce. Yeah. We like model in the hallways for real. I could definitely point out the nerds. The drama club is definitely the nerds of the school. They don't care too much about style or having all all these friends. They're just mainly with their one clique of friends and that's all they're happy with. Sometimes I'm curious about why they are the way they are because us, it's like fun being the way we are. I don't get how it would be different. Like, why would you not want to be popular? I've never had someone approach me that was overweight and try to get to know me. And if they did, I don't think I could ever like see myself like hanging out with them as being like really one of my like close friends because all my close friends are like like good looking. After talking to both groups separately, it was time to bring them all together. All together to discuss the issues of popularity. Check this out. We began the discussion by asking the girls to define popularity. Popularity to me is based on um, what you have and what you can um, attempt to afford basically and show off. I, think I don't it's think more that's so true. On how you carry yeah. yourself, mm -hmm. how you Your talk, confidence. Um, who you talk to. Our money is just an accessory. Like, yeah. of course, it, we have it. Like, why not get it? 
it's usually always the pretty girls. Popularity to me is like, if you're pretty and you look approachable, somebody wants to be your friend. Basically, you have to try to make yourself look presentable. Some of your friends do put us down. It feels like you guys just sit there and you let them put us down. You don't even say, you know what, stop. No matter where you go, outside of the school, inside the school, there's gonna be people that are gonna try to put you down. I try to be friends with everybody, but you know what? I give 100% and I get back 1%. I get thrown in the dirt. I don't wanna sit there and like, think this way, but I'm gonna think that you're gonna make fun of me behind my back once I'm gone. To me, I just think you guys are not different in a bad way, just unique, you know? People are always gonna have something to say about you, but you can't just sit there and pay attention yeah. to it. If y'all know, some of us characterize you guys or your friends as plastic as fake. You just call they us call, fake. You guys yeah, think that I'm we call fake. you weird and, and we make fun of you, but you guys are doing the same thing to us just by you saying that you just, you said that you guys call us plastic. We asked the girls who were considered popular if they could spend the day in the other girl's shoes. And two of the girls said they'd give it a try. I would trade. I mean, for a day. I would just want to see how people look at you guys. It would definitely be a different experience. I don't think it'd be as hard as you guys are making it seem. Joining me now are the girls from the high school. Um, I'm going to start with Amanda. Amanda uh, says that you don't feel pretty and that the girls don't make you feel pretty. Tell me how you felt when you were a little girl. Oh, when I was little, um, everyone used to tell me, oh, how cute she was, how pretty she is. She has, she has such beautiful eyes and she has such pretty hair and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, get into high, I get into middle school and you know, everybody's looking down on me because I'm so short, mm -hmm. or they're calling me ugly because, like, I don't have the patience to straighten my hair. Mm -hmm. So they're calling me ugly because of my hair, because I had braces, because I wear glasses sometimes, so... And Brittany, you have a hard time, too. Um, yeah. I get judged on a lot just feel fine, like, my physical appearance and, you know, like, the way I talk and the way I walk and how I dress. And um, it takes a toll on me, like, you know, sometimes I act like it doesn't bother me in front of the people that, that do it to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, inside it really does bother me. It hurts a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So it hurts. So what do you do when they're saying stuff to you to make it not show that it's hurting? Um, I limit their ways to talk about me. Like, you know, uh, I never really do my hair. So, you know, like, I cut my hair now. People can't talk about me, you know. Um, I'm you cut your hair because they talk about you? No, I mean, not exactly that reason why. It's just because, you know, I like. I just feel like if I limit the ways, like the options I'm talking about me, then I won't hear. I won't hear my name in their mouth. Mm -hmm. So like you know, if, if I cut my hair how it is now, I don't have to. I don't have to do it at all. It's just done. So now it's like, what can you say about my hair? It's and then cut. we have Shantae too. Shantae, tell me what's going on with you. The um, people pick on me because of my weight. Um, mm -hmm. because of the way I look sometimes, and because of the people I hang out with. Um. You know, I like to be funny. I like to make other people feel better about themselves. And it's just that I feel that, you know, to be, you have to be nice and you have mm -hmm. to be kind to make new friends. And you get that niceness and you get that kindness back. But that's not what's happening when you're kind, right? No. no. Tell me what happened in Spanish class. Um, one day, I asked my Spanish teacher if I can do the attendance, and she told me fine. And the chair she had was broken, and she's been meaning to get a, get a new one or whatever. And um, my friend was playing with me or whatever, and I moved too quick in the chair, and it broke a little bit more. And the teacher told me to move back to the rest of the seats with everybody else. And all of a sudden, I just hear, like, they started laughing and everything. And they really thought it was funny. And I was laughing, too, you know, trying to make it seem like a joke or whatever. And then once it stopped getting funny, she kept going. And she kept saying, oh, look at this. She broke the chair. You know, look at her. She can't look at her. She broke a chair. What else is she going to break? Mm -hmm. And I was really, really upset, and everybody saw how upset I was. And the chair was already broken. Right. Yeah. And she, I, tr I tried to tell her that, and she wouldn't listen. And everybody saw how I was upset, and they told me, don't cry. Because that's not the cry. interesting story. The interesting story is not that the chair was all already broken. Right. It's more interesting for them to make fun of you. Right. Do you understand? If you did, yeah. For them to say that you did that. Yeah. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs>
show Social Experiment on High School Popularity, and we're having popular teen girls spend a day in the shoes of unpopular girls experiencing what they go through. Our popular girl, Kristen, agreed to spend the day as a teen struggling with an issue a lot of kids feel judged for, which is being overweight. Check out Kristen's transformation. I'm excited about this transformation. I say, let's do it. As the transformation begins, there goes the prosthetic appliances. We're going to see which one fits you the best. Kristen starts to become introverted. Ready for this? You ready? I'm anxious. I'm nervous. It was time for Kristen to look in the mirror. Oh my god. I've never pictured myself this big. It is like a scary dream. Now that Kristen's transformation was complete, it was time for her to experience life as a teen who feels her weight makes her unpopular. So we created a fictional school with fictional students to illustrate how hard life for that unpopular girl can really be. Look at this. Check this out. And let's go to the center. Today we are doing fitness evaluations, all right? So let's pair off. Kristen, who's your partner? Um, I don't know who my partner is. I don't AJ, know. who's your partner? Come on. You got a new partner. Come on. Lady, I'm hot. There was a lot more attention on me. I felt like everyone was staring at me, and no one really wanted to work out with me because I wouldn't be able to keep up with them, and I kept giving up because it was too hard. Hi. I can go get you a salad if you want. No, I'm not hungry. Yeah. I have to get rid of my food because I can't eat watching that. Well, I definitely didn't want to eat. I lost my appetite after they told me that it made them sick that I was sitting with them. I don't know. I just couldn't talk to anyone. I didn't really, no one would really talk to me. I see the girls that were in the cafeteria that kind of had more of my shape before I was in the suit. And it was definitely different because I knew that they were judging me. Kristen, what was the hardest part of you going through that appearance transformation? I, I think I was just really nervous to see what I was going to look like mm -hmm. and how people were going to react to me because I knew that I was going to see other people mm -hmm. once I got transformed. So, I think, yeah, the hardest part was definitely my nerves and I was, I was afraid to see what I would look like. All right, I want to talk to some of the girls who feel that their weight makes them feel like they don't fit in. Do you see any of the girls that feel they have weight issues that don't make them fit in identify with what was going on with Kristen? Yeah? Who else? All of you guys do? Tell me. Tell me what you identify with the most. Um, people joke about my weight, mm -hmm. and I, I'll sit there and I'll laugh with them just to get it over with, mm -hmm. and then you know, the bell rings and I'm ready to go to my next mm -hmm. period class. A lot of the times when we laugh, we're crying on the inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Melissa? Well, I can see, like, the part where she came in last in gym class, like, partnered up being last. That was, like, me, like, back in elementary school, like, me pick, being picked last and mm -hmm. stuff. So I can, definitely how she, I can definitely see how she felt with getting picked last and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want the audience, and it's no judgment, I'm not judging anybody, I want everybody to be honest because we're about healing today. And um, I want you to raise your hand if you are popular and you have treated somebody like how Kristen was treated in that tape. And I'll raise my hand too because I was popular and not popular at times, but when I was popular I was a mean girl. So I'm one of the girls that used to be like that, treating negatively. Who wants to speak about that? Um, I've been treated badly because of the way I look, and, um, I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, my God. It's okay, Caitlin. One time, um, one time I was in the ice cream store with my friend, and I was chewing gum, and some kid came up to me, and he was making walrus noises, and he was, like, making the movements and everything. What do you want to say to him? 
that he's mean and he's stupid and being popular isn't all important in life. I mean, you're in high school. When you get to college, you're not going to have all the friends you had in high school. You're all going to go your separate ways. Mm -hmm. It's really not that big of a deal to be mean to people because of the way they look. Yeah. Why don't you come give me a hug? <laughs> experiment like no other. The popular kids at a New York high school are trading places with the unpopular kids. Before our popular girl Tamara could experience life as an, un an unpopular teen, she needed a dramatic transformation. Check this out. No matter what makeup they put on me, I'm still going to be the same old Tamara. I'm still going to walk the same, act the same, no matter what. Prosthetic makeup artists Louie and Josh will be transforming Tamara's face. How are you doing, by the way? I'm Louie. Hi, I'm Tamara. Nice to meet you. It's Josh. I feel like a superstar right now. Good I just you. like the attention. As the transformation process continues, Tamara's confidence starts to wane. Yeah, I'm very scared. I'm feeling really nervous. Tamara is given acne. When someone has acne, I think it's like you don't care about your appearance. Not so fabulous hair and very baggy clothing. And finally, it's time for her to see the completed look in the mirror. I'm so scared to look in the mirror. Like Wow, I don't know what to say. This is, this is nasty, actually. People actually look like this, too. Like, if I seen a girl like this, I would definitely tell her to go home and wash her face. This is crazy. I can't look at this anymore, guys. For Tamara to really experience what life is like on the unpopular side, we created a fictional school with fictional students to illustrate how hard life for that unpopular girl can really be. Look at this. Check this out. Today, we're going to present our essays for the class, okay? And hopefully you've all prepared your essay on what it's like to be me. Normally, Tamara loves to be the center of attention and be in front of the crowd. <laughs> so who would like to go first? But in her new self, the thought of getting up in front of her peers is overwhelming. Who would like to share their essay next? Tamara? Can I say right here? <laughs> uh, nope, nope, this is a presentation. <laughs> Immediately. Uh oh. <laughs> the students begin to make fun of Tamara. Uh -oh. What's it like to be me? I can't hear you. <laughs> Something she's never experienced before. <laughs> Not being able to control the situation puts me behind the girls who have it all. Okay, guys, let's listen up, right? I'm sorry, I'm bored. <laughs> okay, okay. Our teacher has to help Tamara finish her sentence. So can you tell us where that's coming from, what that feels like? My self-esteem, I have no type of self-esteem. Like, this is hard. I don't think we care. OK, let's, let's step over here, sweetheart. We don't have to hear them, just right here. I don't know how to feel right now. Like, I don't even know, like, I don't know. They're just laughing at me, and it hurts. I hope she doesn't bite. <laughs> Next, the class gathered for senior portraits. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, it's so gross. But for Tamara, the idea of posing in class in front of everyone evokes a torment that she has never known before. Oh my God, how could you just sit there? Uh, don't break the lens. And the other students are not making it any easier for her. crying again. Tamara is speechless. This is like my third time watching Leprechaun oh. from the Hood. <laughs> As the students continue to torment her. Is that a popping pimple or a volcanic eruption? <laughs> oh. It's like the princess of my toilet. Okay, we're gonna talk to you, Tamara, in a little bit. Um, but I wanna talk to our girls first, um, who said that their looks and their clothes made them feel like they don't fit in, which was Brittany, Peggy, and Amanda R. So, um, which part of the way that Tamara was treated did you identify with the most? Um, for me, definitely the acne and the, um, I guess the clothes she was wearing. Because, you know, I like to come to school to dress comfortably in many cases, and, you know, just how my style fits, because I don't care about how to impress other people or what I wear in high school, you know? And um, my acne, of course, because, you know, I can't help it. And those pictures, it's like, 
you know, you never know if a pimple's gonna be there or if it's not gonna be there. And I don't wear makeup to cover it up, so it's gonna show if it's there or not. You know, mm -hmm. I have to think like, okay, so who's gonna say something now about my acne, you know? Anybody person? anybody else felt like they were feeling what was going on on the screen? You can stand on up. Um, I'm Maria and I'm in middle school and I don't shop at the popular stores. I don't have the coolest clothes and um, I've never been popular and one time in the sixth grade, I was cornered in the bathroom by uh, a bunch of girls so they could just tell me that I'm ugly and that I don't have cool clothes or anything like that. And then I didn't say anything, but I went home and I cried for like ever and I didn't want to go to school the next what day. What do you mean you were cornered in the bathroom? What was, um, they, they, they ganged up on you? Yeah, they blocked the door. They blocked the door and they were making fun of you? Mm -hmm. You know what's so funny, you guys keep on talking about the cool clothes. I don't really understand what that is because I had to wear a uniform every single day of school, every single day. So we were all the same when it came to clothes. You know, that I didn't experience that. And I wish that there could be something like that. I'm not saying I'm trying to be some socialist or something, saying everybody needs to wear uniforms, but it definitely worked for my school and the schools that I went to. And I, I find it awful that in a place when you're trying to learn that you have to be thinking about looking popping and looking fresh and looking hot. That's the last thing you guys need to be worried about. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk to T Tamara yeah. when we come right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're conducting an extraordinary Tyra Show social experiment on high school popularity. What makes someone popular and what is life really like for the unpopular kids? I'm surrounded by teen girls who represent both of these groups and we all just watched Tamara, a popular girl, be transformed into a girl who is struggling with her skin and her hair and her clothes. So how did you feel that day? I mean it was makeup but I could tell that it, it seemed to affect you. Yeah. Well because Obviously, I was a popular girl, but it was hard because... In real life, you're a popular girl. Yeah, yes. I am. Uh -huh. And um, it was hard because my face is not usually like that. I wake up, and I'm blessed with good skin and good hair and stuff. And these kids were, like, treating me so badly. Like, they were making fun of me. Usually, I'm on the other side. Not making fun of somebody, but I just felt so horrible. Okay, you said yeah. that you were on the other side. So are you on the other side of making fun of people? Not like actually making fun of people, but my friends could make fun of people, and I'm the one sitting there probably just not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you girls feel safe enough to tell Tamara the things that she has done and said? You do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Not Let to us know. me, but like she used to be in drama club, and when we all got our parts, there's a character in the play that's supposed to be like really skinny and blonde and stuff. And so there's a girl that isn't exactly the skinniest person in the world playing a skinny girl. And one day I heard Tamara talking about, oh, she's fat, she shouldn't be playing this girl, and all that stuff. Anybody else? Candace, what do you um, want to say to Tamara? I go to school with them, and what I see, and also from Drama Club, and how I know her from school, it, she wasn't really being sincere during the social experiment after she told us how she reacted. Mm -hmm. Because during school she makes fun of me and my friends like if, there's, if it's no big deal. Like if her words can't hurt us and we're just gonna walk away not being affected by anything she says. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? They say that you're not gonna change and no. that you do things to make people sad. Well, first of all, I never made fun of her before. Like I went to awareness weekend with her and she was in my group, so that was kind of a lie. And um... But is it a lie or a there's one thing of, of us not knowing. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't mean you intended to hurt her, but things that you say can hurt somebody. So there's, there's, a such, there's a such thing as, like, a fact. Like, I threw the ball, I did not throw the ball. Or, when I said this, I didn't mean to hurt you, but I did. Do you understand the difference? Yeah. One is a fact, something happened and something didn't happen. And the other thing is an emotion. So you can't say that her emotion is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think if somebody says that they hurt you, instead of saying, you're a liar, you should say, well, how did I hurt you? What did I say to hurt you? Do you want to try that? Yeah. Okay, the floor is yours. How did I hurt you, Candace? Well, the things you say, not, maybe not always directed towards me, but the people I hang out with and the, my friends, the people I care about, I spend my, all my time with them. It makes me feel bad because I don't see them the way everyone else might see them or the popular plastics might see them. I see them as people who care about each other and no matter what they look like, they're good people. Mm -hmm. And you, always, you, you and maybe some other people judge them 
depending on how they look, and that's what hurts. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Well, I take it offense how you just called us plastics because just because we like to dress nice or per se do our hair or makeup, that makes us plastics. Like people like to look nice, and how that's judging us in a way. It's not that I'm trying to judge you. It's just that I'm saying that your perception of nice might not always be ours, and just because we don't think looking good is the same as you, like you, you'll make fun of us just because we look different. Well, I'm gonna go down a list because I know some girls are kind of scared to say the things that you've done to hurt them. So I'm gonna go down the list and protect their privacy. They're in the room, okay? Um, some say that, Tamara, that you have tripped them in the hallway. Some say that you've made jokes about someone's, give me your hand. Someone said that you made jokes about somebody's facial hair. Someone said that they were, a, uh, that you spread rumors that they were a cutter. And someone also said that you skipped someone's lines in school in the play on purpose. That's not true at all. You can't say you're guilty of any of that? Honestly, no. I really can't. Really? I'm not saying that I, if I did So you think everybody's crazy? No, if I did something, I definitely will live up to it. But yeah. a cutter, I skip. Okay, I know what they're talking about with the drama, with the, um, I skipped their lines, but I forgot. I didn't do it on purpose. Like, people do okay. mistakes. I said sorry after it. The first, okay. there was two plays. The first time, it went good. The second time, I made a mistake and skipped a line. Let me like, tell you the things that I used to do, okay? Mm -hmm. I was a mean girl. Mean child, woo! mean and I remember being in uh, like going up to girls and just being like you look crazy like yeah we wear uniforms but you wear yours crazy <laughs> you know you ain't got no money we didn't have no money either <laughs> you ain't got no money um one time that we were playing four square and this other girl wanted to come and play and I was like no it's l-o-c-k lock and she was like, what? And I was like, it's L-O-C-K locked. She's like, what's that? I'm like, it's L-O-C-K locked. You cannot play. I said that to her. And do you know what she did? She socked me in the face. Oh, God. <laughs> As well she should have. I don't, I'm not trying to condone violence with children. But I was so disgusting, she socked me in the face. And I think we're, we're going to take a commercial break right now. I want you to marinate on some things, because today is about healing. It's not about okay. attacking you. It's not about attacking you. You are a popular girl. Do you know what that is? There's a lot of power in that. You have so much power. But we're going to try to turn that power around to a positive place. So during these two minutes, you're going to have two minutes. Okay. We're going to think about some of the things we've done and try to make some apologies and heal from this. Okay. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. Popularity's social experiment has given popular teens a chance to experience what life is like for their less popular peers. So, uh, before the break, we were talking about all the mean things I used to do, and some of the girls in the audience, and some not, just a little too scared, but I understand, uh, to, to say the things that they feel that you have done or said to hurt them. And I want to know, are there any things that you can think of that you've done in any of the girls? It's not just you. I mean, there's, these are girls up here that I feel probably caused some pain. And, and some of the girls that aren't so popular. Anybody ready to volunteer just some things that they've done that they think they can do better? By no means is this like, Rrr. I mean, I held her hand through the whole thing. <laughs> so you have to know that this is not an attack. We're trying to, like, get better here. I have something to say. I'm popular, but I'm not mean. And Tamara's popular, but I've never seen her be mean. Never seen her be mean. Okay, I'm what sure you're doing now is you're, you're, you're saying that what I tried to explain to her is that there's an emotion and you cannot say okay. that somebody feeling something is non-existent. It is somebody feeling something. Do you understand? We're not, I'm not saying that you're bad. I just told the whole world and I told these girls that I used to be that way. So you have to understand that this exists everywhere. It exists in office buildings. It exists on playgrounds. It exists in schools. It exists in elementary, junior high school, colleges. This is life, but the reason why it is so important to get it early is because the people that are hurting from it, it can, it can create lifelong lasting impressions. And the more you say that it doesn't exist is the more that it makes me truly believe that it does. Do you have anything to say or any apologies or any anything? This is your chance. Um. I would like to say sorry to the people if I did hurt their feelings. Like, no, not if I did hurt their feelings. That's like saying, you know, okay, if you want me to say sorry, I'm going to say sorry. <laughs> you know, if I did something to upset you, yeah. then. 
somebody apologized to me like that that mm -hmm. I worked with recently, and I said, I don't accept that apology. Oh. If I made you feel, uh, no. It's a pure apology. Let's try again. Okay. Um, if I. No, okay, I, 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 I just don't think that I'm a mean person. That's why it's kind of hard. Not a mean person. Like, I'm not a mean person either, mm -hmm. but I do mean things. Yeah. Mm -hmm, we all do. They do mean things over here. This is not Angel. This is not Angelville and Devilville over here. Y'all ain't perfect. Y'all do things that hurt people. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about popular and unpopular. That's what we're focusing on right now. Not perfect people, imperfect people. That's not what we're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. You think you're perfect? No, no one's perfect. No. But I mean, I don't think it's all about popular and unpopular. Then what else is it about? I think it's about, really, I think it should be about, you know, teaching a lesson. I mean, just so you get an understanding. Because, you know, we're all going to the same school, same high school. And I'm, I think that just to be clear and just said that we shouldn't have to go to school every day being judged or have a name said to us or, you know. No, and you shouldn't have to, but this is life. It is. And, and no, this is life. This is life. And you will leave this school and you will go to college. You guys will get jobs and it will continue to happen. So what we're trying to do is make change, but we're not going to be able to change the world and make it a perfect place. Yeah. Do you understand? So I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is to help you guys when you guys go back to school to make some change at your school so that you all can be ambassadors and you all can be ambassadors cont to continue to make that change. Because this world will never be a place that unpopular and popular ends. It'll never be a place when in and out and cool and not. That will exist for the rest of our lives. But we can be above that and we can change that. And it takes, it takes the people in power to make change. I would like to say sorry um, for hurting anybody that may feel that I hurt them. But I would like an apology for you guys calling us plastic because we're really not like that. All right, let's start. Who wants to apologize for calling them plastics? All right, let's get it out. Hey. Let's start with Melissa. Well, we're sorry for calling you plastics on Monday. Like, we just wanted to know what it felt like for you guys to be us for a day. But we are truthfully sorry, and I hope you accept like each of our apologies. And I just hope we, from this experience, we get closer together. I like that. Is that accepted? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to apologize? I don't think it's deserved to apologize to them. You don't think they deserve an apology? I really don't. Well, then that's like. And I that's said, where no. it stops. That's that's the problem. That is the problem. Like, it, let me explain something to you. I'm going to get racial right now. Oh, okay. I'm going to get racial, OK? Black and white, OK? Say there's, some, say there's some white people and say there's some black people, OK? And the white people are saying all kind of racist stuff to the black people. Racist, racist, racist. And the black people start saying racist stuff back. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. You this, you this, you this. And then the mediator comes and says, this needs to stop, right? We all need to apologize for what we said. And the black people say, like, I ain't gonna apologize. I ain't gonna apologize. I'm black. I'm black. I don't need to apologize. I've had so much pain. Doesn't matter. Things were said. Negative things were still said. So just because somebody is maybe a more privileged group or a more majority of a group doesn't mean that the minorities <laughs> don't apologize. Does that make sense? Yes. Does it? We gotta take a break. Y'all are difficult. <laughs> we'll be right back. Um, uh, we we get we make a lot of headway on on the Tyra show, and we you know there's a lot of change that can happen in an hour. Um, I, I would say that the change that's happened in this hour is minute. Um, I, I, I do applaud Melissa very much for making that apology. I think it's very big of you, especially somebody that has been persecuted and talked about. Um, and that shows true beauty. That really is true beauty. That is, that is something that is so rare for somebody that has been persecuted to be able to give love. And I think we should give her... Um, Chances for anybody to say anything. Anybody um, want to say anything? Uh huh. You know, you, we're both girls. We're all girls here, and you know, y'all talk, y'all talk about confidence and how you feel your confidence is what brought you to where you are today and your popularity where you are today, right? Yeah. Y'all all agree on that, right? Yep. Yes. 
We, fe we feel that our confidence brought us where we are today. We could have something in common. We can try to make something in common. We can try and be friends. But you know what? There's that border and there that, there's that wall. And it's like, we don't, you don't try and break down that wall. So we're not going to try and put in our effort to break down that wall. So that wall is always going to be there. Because you guys understand you don't have the power to break down the wall. We need to be Do you together. understand? Yeah, we need to work you, together you, you to break down the wall. You don't have the power to break down the wall. In the hierarchy of life, in the hierarchy of high school, the popular girls have the power to break the wall down. But what needs to happen is, if they break that wall down, we need you guys to be there to accept apologies. We need you to be there to give apologies on the things that you guys are guilty of as well. But I apologize. I, I truly do apologize if, you know, calling you plastics when we have called you plastics, if that truly hurts your feeling, I apologize. No, not if it truly hurt their okay. feelings. If it hurt your no, feelings, I apologize. No, I called you plastic I and I apologize. I apologize for hurting your feelings. There we go. There we go. That's a real apology. Understand the difference? Yeah. That's a real apology. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. I think it's, it's, it's evidently clear, beyond clear, crystal clear that there was, um, there was no moment of, of what I wanted to happen, of these two sides to join and to try to figure out a way to coexist in a way of, of respect, of sincere um, collective apology, not individual apology. Uh, and it's, it's sad, but it is a true, I think they're a true microcosm of our country, uh, the polarization of the haves and the have-nots. And um, I find it really sad. And I. I I, I don't know what to say, um, but it is very disheartening for me, and I'm sure a lot of you at home. If you want to sound off, sound off more about today's show, go to TyraShow.com and tell us what you think about it. And to me, this is a show that needed two hours, three hours, five hours. It needed definitely a lot more than an hour to break through. But um, I, the, the, what I want to leave you all with is that there's a lot of power, and there's a lot of power in being popular, and a lot of power to make change, a lot of power to make people feel good about themselves. I'm a very popular person, and I don't use it in a negative way. I try to use it to uplift, to give people opportunities that they can never have in a million years, to um, spread beauty and love through women and self-esteem, and that's what I use with my popularity and my power. And to you girls, I want to say that and not in any disrespect to the popular girls, because a lot of popular people are very successful. A lot of popular kids are very successful in life. But there is a high statistic of the unpopular girls in school that are the CEOs, that are the leaders of businesses and companies, and are the best mothers and the strongest women of our nation. So it is important to know that you might not be hot and popping right now, but you haven't peaked yet. Certain people peak at different ages in their life, and you guys just haven't peaked yet, but it's coming, and it's going to be very sweet. We'll see you later.